Although they have a bad reputation, sharks are a cornerstone species of the ocean ecosystems and my personal favorite animal to film and photograph. That's why we're going to take a closer look at them in today's shark special on the Dive Saga channel. Did you know that the oldest shark fossils are more than 450 million years old? That means sharks were around before trees even existed. Over the years I've done several shark dives and I've seen my fair share of reef sharks and blue sharks. I've seen really big sharks and baby sharks. I've seen far away sharks and really close by sharks. But when it comes to sheer stocky shark attitude, nothing compares to the bull shark dive we're about to do here. Full disclosure here, I've done this dive several times, so I was actually able to select the best footage of each dive. Now it's worth noting as well that these dives take place at 30 meters, 100 feet, and you can't use video lights. So that gives some perspective to the quality of the footage, should you choose to do these dives yourself. The bull shark is a species of requiem shark. That means they're migratory, life-bearing sharks that can be found pretty much all over the planet in warmer waters. In fact, in some parts of Africa, the bull shark is actually known as the Zambezi shark. Because they're a migratory species and because they can survive in both salt and fresh water, bull sharks sometimes migrate up into rivers since they hunt in limited visibility. It's often during these journeys that the sharks may mistake a human being for a potential piece of food, which is where their mixed reputation comes from. Bull sharks are often listed as the third most aggressive sharks after the great white and the tiger shark. When we say aggressive, we do have to apply some nuance. See, sharks don't really enjoy human meat and they're definitely not hunting for humans. In fact, on a yearly basis, in a typical year, only 20 humans or so get killed by sharks, whereas over 20 million sharks get killed by humans. In terms of statistics of how many humans get killed by, sharks rank well below um, cows, coconuts, selfies, and even vending machines. That's right, more people are killed annually by vending machines than by all shark species combined. Still, sharks are wild animals and bull sharks do complete the top three of incidents. So when diving with bull sharks, some common sense and some precautions are needed. For one, all divers have to be dressed in black. Full black wetsuits, black fins, black masks, etc. There is no proof that certain colors are more agitative than others, but a diver dressed in black definitely stands out well against the blue water and white sand, so the bull sharks can clearly identify us as something they're not interested in eating. That brings us to the second precaution, one that will probably grind the gears of every buoyancy aficionado, but to avoid any confusion for the sharks, divers are asked to lay close to the floor while holding an anchored line. That's not just because there is some current, but also so everyone stays low to the ocean floor and can be confused for a tasty snack, like a seal swimming overhead.
The tension on the boat out to the bull shark dive site is always palpable. Although nobody is necessarily anxious or worried, it's natural to have a healthy sense of respect and apprehension for this type of diving. Once everyone is down on the bottom, the spectacle starts. It's worth mentioning that these dives are feeding dives. In fact, all the dives I've been on have taken place right after the feeding events. Now, there are some very valid arguments for and against these types of dives. The opponents of these feeding dives will argue that it changes the behavior of the sharks because we're actually training them to just show up at a certain place at a certain time and there will be food. It also runs the risk of associating those divers with the food and potentially causing some confusion. The proponents of these feeding dives will argue that it shifts the economy and the monetary value of the shark from a dead shark after fishing to a live shark for these feeding dives and that way changes the value perception for local populations. It is also argued that of course it changes the negative perception of sharks into positive experiences with sharks. I'm not here to make an argument in any direction but I am curious to hear what you guys think down below in the comments. There they are. Carefully, the bull sharks start circling the crowd and looking for their lunchtime appointment. All the sharks that visit here are actually pregnant females. They know there will be food around, so it's low-hanging fruit for them and a free show for us. Still, these sharks are expecting to eat, so it's a good idea to keep arms and legs close to your chest. At times the bull sharks come quite close, curious what all this audience is about. As a diver it's definitely important to look over your shoulder once in a while and if you don't have nerves of steel this dive might not be for you. A southern stingray is wanting some attention as well but it has a tough crowd to compete with. Everyone's eyes are on the bull sharks that are circling and appearing from all sides. I'm generally very comfortable around sharks, but when one of these ladies almost makes a sudden turn towards me, you can clearly see me flinch. It really is a tough choice between looking at the sharks and looking at my camera, getting good coverage for this episode, but being aware of my surroundings. Adult female bull sharks average around 2.4 meters or 8 feet in length and typically weigh 130 kilograms or nearly 300 pounds. But measurements of up to 3.5 meters or 11 feet are not unheard of. I don't think it's a sight I'll really ever get used to. Because the dive site is around 30 meters or 100 feet deep, even on Nitrox 32%, we eventually have to leave the bottom. Luckily, there's a nearby shallow ledge of reef to cool down from this high-intensity dive. Did you know that sharks can grow and lose over 30,000 teeth during their lifetime? That's why you can sometimes find shark teeth on the ocean floor. 
like this one, belonging to a prehistoric megalodon shark. Blue sharks are some of the most docile and friendly sharks you will ever meet. So it's no wonder I was able to get them in front of my camera in the Azores in Portugal. The Azores are an archipelago far away in the Atlantic Ocean, off of the coast of Europe, and are a perfect hub for seeing transient blue sharks. The blue shark is an oceanic and epipelagic shark, found worldwide in deep temperate and tropical waters, from the surface to about 350 meters or 1,150 feet deep. In temperate seas, like here in the Azores, they may approach shore, where they can be observed by divers, while in tropical waters they inhabit greater depths. Blue sharks live as far north as Norway and as far south as Chile. They can be found off of the coasts of every continent except Antarctica. Although no sharks are particularly dangerous to humans, blue sharks are notably friendly. Over the last 500 years there have only been 13 human-related incidents, only four of which with a deadly ending. That's less than one deadly incident per 100 years. Blue sharks, on the other hand, often fall victim to overfishing as bycatch or are caught and killed for their skin, which is used as leather, their fins for shark fin soup and their liver for oil. They are also occasionally sought out as game fish for their beauty and speed. Despite being considered one of the most abundant and resilient shark species, the blue shark populations are thought to be decreasing as they make up 60% of all reported shark catches worldwide and singularly dominate both the fin trade and shark meat trade. Reaching maximum lengths of around 4 meters, 12 and a half feet long, the blue shark's slender body and elongated tail fins help make them one of the fastest sharks in the world and one of my favorite sharks to film. Did you know that the hammer on a hammerhead shark's head is called a cephalofoil? They use it to pin stingrays to the ocean floor so they can trap them and eat them. You might not expect it, but there are a surprising number of celebrity sharks out there. Almost everyone knows the unfortunately scary shark in the movie Jaws and the much nicer great white shark Bruce in Finding Nemo. There's South Korean earworm baby shark and the extinct megalodon shark from the movie The Meg. You can even find an episode on the Dive Saga channel where we find actual megalodon shark teeth. However, what those sharks have in common is that they're not exactly real. But when researching new episodes, I stumbled upon something better. I found some news articles about an actual shark, a celebrity shark called Snooty. She's a lemon shark, which means she's on the vulnerable species list, and there's more. Snooty the lemon shark seems to have made her way to the top in the halls of fame due to a deformation of her jaw which gives her a characteristic appearance, often interpreted as a smile. Some people may say that that's a face only a mother could love, but I disagree. I love sharks, people need to see that smile, 
I'm going to find Snooty. Finding Snooty is easier said than done. There is more than 1,335,000,000 cubic kilometers of water in the ocean. And although shark populations are critically low across the planet, there are currently estimated to be about a billion sharks living today. That is a lot of sharks to parse through. But Snooty is frequently seen in Jupiter, Florida. So that is where we will start our search. Doing some uh, snooping, snooting online and uh, actually figured out that Snooty the lemon shark has an Instagram page. Uh, so she's even more of a celebrity than I already thought she was. Eight and a half thousand uh, followers. So uh, yeah, wow, that's a big deal. I don't know, now I really hope we find, uh, that we find Snooty. Um, by the way, just to be clear, it's not super known apparently how her deformity uh, came to be. So um, maybe we'll find some more clarity on the dives, who knows. There are over 480 known shark species, but Snooty is a lemon shark. Lemon sharks can be recognized by their yellow, green or brown color and white belly. Their first and second dorsal fins are almost equal in size. Female lemon sharks, like Snooty, are around 7.5 feet or well over 2 meters long. And then there is the characteristic smile, of course, which is not typical to lemon sharks, but is typical to Snooty. Finding Snooty and showing her beautiful face to the world is now a mission. Sharks are friends and Snooty is no exception. At this point it comes down to pure luck, because nobody can guarantee a face-to-face -face with Snooty, or even any other shark for that matter. Underwater photographer Gil Sassi and Paddy course director colleague Steven Ainsley are joining me on this mission because getting a good shot with Snooty is not going to be easy. We are lucky enough to have this episode sponsored by Ocean Technology Systems, the world leader in the manufacturing of underwater communications and full face masks, which should help us communicate and coordinate during the chaos of the shoot. Now, we also need some specific diving equipment because sharks don't really have very good eyesight, so we have to help them distinguish us from the background and from any other food sources. So we wear everything black, black fins, black wetsuit, black hood and black gloves so that these don't look like delicious fish fingers. These are pretty sharky waters, so it's not long before the first sharks show up. Out of the blue, a sandbar shark makes an appearance. Sandbar sharks are easily recognizable because of their large dorsal fin and fairly large pectoral fins. Behind us, out of the blue, a bull shark comes to join the party. Bull sharks are easy to recognize because of their stocky appearance and distinct counter shading, meaning they're dark on top and white on the underside. With shark action ramping up, it only makes sense for the lemon sharks to start joining in on the party. Thank you. 
This isn't snooty, but what a beauty. Here, you can very clearly see the size of their two dorsal fins being equal as a distinguishing feature. It seems the lemon sharks come in a gang and before long I find myself completely surrounded. You can see I'm even a bit overwhelmed and don't know where to look first as I'm scanning the area for Snooty. Sadly, Snooty is nowhere to be found. We start to realize that this is a needle in a haystack scenario. The images are still super cool and I love all sharks, but finding Snooty would have been epic. Sharks are amazing creatures and they really don't deserve the bad reputation they get from the media. Shark on human incident rates are very low compared to other animal species. And shark populations are one of the main indicators for ocean health, since they are a big player in maintaining the food chain balance. And just as I had resigned to the idea that finding Snooty was not an option for this episode, I was greeted with the most beautiful smile. Yes, guys, that's Snooty the lemon shark. Uh, we got her. Uh, super cool. I'm very honored to have met a celebrity. Now, if you uh, are excited as well, you can always follow Snooty the lemon shark online on Instagram. You can also follow Dive Saga, and you should definitely subscribe to the Dive Saga channel if you haven't already. Uh, I appreciate each and every single one of you. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.